Major League pitching star Roy Halladay crashed his airplane into the Gulf of Mexico. Let's find out what happened on this episode of Taking Off's Accident Investigations. Hi, I'm Dan Milliken, and we're going to talk about Major League Hall of Famer Roy Halladay's crash, and we're going to talk about the airplane, the Icon A5. This channel is sponsored by Colton Mortgage, Colton Taking Off, Flying Eyes Optics, and Marshall Protective Services. More at the end about these wonderful people. Okay. Harry Leroy Halliday III was born May 14, 1977 in Denver, Colorado. His father was a pilot for a food processing company, and he certainly passed on his love of flying to the young boy, teaching him to pitch and teaching him to fly. As a matter of fact, Roy Jr., the pitcher's father, still flies regularly, buying a chipmunk shortly after his son's death and adding that to a collection of small aircraft that he owns, restoring them and selling them and then looking for the next one. It's somewhat well known that Junior bought a house with a basement at least 60 feet long so he could train his son to pitch no matter what the weather was. But he also taught young Roy to fly as well. And when Roy Halliday died flying the Icon, I have no idea what Junior went through and is going through. It was reported that he was very close with his son. Halliday pitched for the Arvada West Colorado High School team, leading them to a state championship. It was there that he was drafted 17th overall by the Toronto Blue Jays in 1995. Three years later, he made it to the big leagues, nearly pitching a no-hitter in his second outing, going all the way to two outs in the ninth. But struggles in 2000 led to a demotion back to the minors, and he went to work hard on his delivery, and it paid off. Back in the majors in 2002, Halliday earned his first All-Star selection. The next year, he won the Cy Young as the best pitcher in the American League. And he was known for his durability, leading the league in complete games pitched. In 2010, after being traded to the Phillies, he pitched the 20th perfect game and later pitched the second postseason no-hitter in Major League Baseball history. He won the Cy Young for the National League. And after that, injuries were taking its toll and after the 2013 season, he retired as the major league leader in complete games with 67. And the injuries are an important part of this tragic story. Halliday had surgeries for his shoulder and back, and he actually pitched his final two years with a broken back. And at his retirement conference, he mentioned the back pain. But the major, major issue for me was, uh, as I mentioned to some of the media the last, uh, last spring, was. Um, my back really became an issue for me. Uh, I have uh, two pars fractures, um, a uh, eroded disc between the L4, L5, and there's a there's a significant step back in there to where it's um, the nerves are being pinched. Well, Halliday gave back a lot, and not just doing what superstar athletes do to throw money around. Several times he earned the Blue Jays Roberto Clemente nomination for his work with underprivileged children. And you get that from being the best person on the team and giving back. It's clear that Halliday had a big heart. Halliday was married and had two children. Now, to some of you, it might seem I'm giving Halliday a pass, but when I dived into the story, I realized it was more than rich celebrity enables himself to drugs and death. If I were to put myself in his shoes, dealing with the constant pain and a horrible addiction, who knows what I would do. But for those out there in a similar situation, please get help. And by all means, don't pilot your own plane. And if you think I'm going to go light on Halliday, let me know in the comments. All right, in October of 2013, as the Major League Baseball season ended, along with Roy's career, his family was in crisis mode, as reported later by ESPN. He finally agreed to change, and he went into a drug rehab clinic. This was the second time. He had checked in while still on the Phillies roster. Halliday had grown up in a Mormon family, and early in his marriage, when his wife found hidden, empty whiskey bottles, he had told her it was just unwinding and enjoying the newfound freedom from life in a Mormon home. And then as his career progressed, sleeping pills to help wind down, and then a lot of pain, so pain medication. In that second stint in drug rehab, it ended early. Halliday was convinced someone had snuck a cell phone in and he was afraid the news would get out, so he left. 
It was a few weeks later in December of 2013 that he publicly announced his retirement. After retirement, Halliday threw himself back into flying. He had owned several planes, a Cessna 182 and then a Cessna Caravan. Not a plane that most pilots fly recreationally in. It's used for cargo and some light passenger work and a strange pick for a general aviation pilot. But I guess if I had the money, I might get one to haul all my friends around. It's got that big, huge turboprop up in front. Then Roy bought the Icon A5 that sells for just under $400,000. And this unique plane is an amphibious one. It can take off on land or water. It's small. A quick diversion into the Icon A5. The concept plane was first flown in 2008. The idea was basically a toy for grown-ups. A sleek, cool machine that could take off on water or land. The interior was designed by BMW. The exterior was designed by a designer who worked for Nissan. In 2012, the company applied to the FAA for exemption on the A5, originally designed for the light sport class. The later modifications required by the FAA resulted in it being overweight for the class, but the FAA granted the LSA weight increase in 2013. Um, for non-pilots out there, what this means is that the ICON could be piloted with a lesser pilot certificate, the sports pilot certificate, and you don't even need a seaplane rating. It was huge. The first customer plane was delivered in 2015. ICON hit the aviation news big time in 2016 when the A5 purchaser agreement went public. ICON was requiring things like certain maintenance and promise not to sue and factory overhauls every 2,000 hours and a limit on the aircraft life to 6,000 hours. And every aircraft would have a camera and recorder to monitor the pilot's activities that was owned by the manufacturer. Much of this was not standard airplane purchasing and there was a big stink. The leadership of the company walked back some of the more egregious terms of the contract, like the pilot monitoring and capping the overhaul costs, and the limit on the lifespan was removed. Later, ICON would be in the news again, with high-profile crashes like this one hurting the company, layoffs happened, and new money from China came in, and the CEO was sent packing. Now he leads a group fighting to regain control of the company with the strategy now that the primarily Chinese-owned company is shipping U.S. technology back overseas. Not related to the Halliday crash, but I found it all interesting. In flying the Icon, Halliday loved the recreational fun. And 12 days before the accident, he flew the Icon under a bridge. And then a week before the crash, he posted on social media that flying it was like flying a fighter jet. On November 7th, 2017, Roy Halliday crashed in his Icon A5 amphibious light sport airplane. He and his wife actually did some promotional photography and video for the Icon, but it was never released in light of what happened. And here's what we know about November 7th. Halliday took off from the lake next to his home near Tampa, telling his wife he was going to return the Icon to its home airport of Brooksville, Tampa Bay Regional, about 25 miles away to the north. And at the time, Halliday had about 51 hours in the A5, 14 of which was in this plane. He had a total of 720 hours as a pilot. He took off and never really got above 2,000 feet for the 17 minute flight. He flew north towards the airport for about five miles before a sudden west turn towards the Gulf of Mexico. And as he approached the coastline, he descended to what some reports say was as little as five feet over the water. And then once into the Gulf, he performed three maneuvers. Some of the maneuvering was done at as much as two Gs on the light sport aircraft, which by the way, did not exceed the plane's tolerance. On the final maneuver, the NTSB report states that the angle of attack increased to 15 degrees and the airplane reached 358 feet and then banked more than 50 degrees to the right and descended nose low, wings level, and impacted the water. The data suggests he went straight up and stalled. NTSB agrees and said it was loss of control. He died from blunt force trauma and drowning. Post-crash analysis showed no mechanical or structural defect that would have led to this. The Icon, by the way, is equipped with a CAPS system. That's an airplane parachute but the pin that a pilot is to remove during pre-flight checklist was not removed, so he would not have been able to deploy the parachute. 
He was pretty low, but still, who knows, at 300 feet, the deployment of the parachute might have saved his life. Soon after the crash, his toxicology report came back with amphetamines, 10 times any therapeutic level, high amount of morphine, antidepressants. The medical examiner's office revealed that Halliday's blood contained morphine, hydromorphone, amphetamine, fluoxetin, that's the antidepressant, baclofen, that's the muscle relaxer, and zolpidem, that's basically Ambien which is a sleep aid. One forensic pathologist said he had a drug combination similar to a speedball. The NTSB said in its final report, all of the substances were at or above the levels that affect the central nervous system functions, including judgment, executive functioning, alertness, attention, and psychomotor skills. The final score as to what caused the crash from the NTSBs? Well, the pilot's improper decision to perform aggressive, low-altitude maneuvers due to his impairment from the use of multiple psychoactive substances, which resulted in a loss of control. Roy Halliday had big issues in his life that he turned to drugs to try to solve, and in doing that, he left two children fatherless, he left behind a loving wife and a grieving father and many others. And like I said earlier, if you're in this boat, seek help. It's out there. Don't wait for something tragic before the pain of the consequences overcomes the pain that led to the addiction. In January 2019, Henry Leroy Doc Halliday was inducted into the Major League Baseball Hall of Fame. Thanks for watching, and also thanks to our sponsors. And if you're looking for a residential mortgage, check out ColtonTakingOff.com. It's run by a pilot. Also, Pilot Run is Flying Eyes Optics. We're using our discount code TAKINGOFF10, all caps, one word with the number 10, will get you 10% off your order. And Marshall Protective Services at mpsprotects.com. And if you'd like to see another great baseball player legend, check out this video on Roberto Clemente and what exactly happened in Puerto Rico that fateful New Year's Eve that took him from the world so early. Stay safe out there and remember, superior judgment trumps superior skills.